God puts us in nations, in places, not by mistake, but to do a job. What if we opened our eyes to the needs of our colleagues, of our leaders, of our subordinates, and we were a priest on their behalf? My name is Brett Johnson. I'm Lynn Johnson. And we'd like to welcome you to the Repurposing Business podcast that will be coming to you each week. Welcome to Season 6, How to Work Like God in 31 Weeks. Welcome to the Repurposing Business Podcast. We're in the series, Work Like God in 31 Ways. Way number 30, work completely, or put another way, complete the work. I don't know about you, but I find it easier to start things than to finish things. Uh, I've had people suggest I write a book, for example, and find that I've actually done quite a bit of work on the topic already. Recently, a friend said, Didn't you already do an outline of this? And it's true, I start things, but I don't always finish them. So it takes some discipline and some grit to just keep going until you actually finish the thing that you started. A great example is in the book of John chapter 4, where Jesus uh, has headed through Samaria and sent his disciples ahead to go and get some food. And they come back, and to their horror, he's speaking to a Samaritan woman who's out at the well drawing water. You know the story well. And um, they're quite shocked, firstly, that their boss is talking to a woman on his own. Secondly, that he's talking to a Samaritan. So they try to draw him away from this interaction. And they also say, look, The Samaritans aren't really our target audience. Let's get focused over here. Let's keep going and move on back into dealing with the Jews. And then when they can't pick him up on these things, they say, look, you haven't had anything to eat. Why don't you ignore the woman effectively and have some food? And he replies, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Jesus says, My food is to finish his work. When we work like God, we finish his work. We don't go half-baked. We don't conceptualize about it. We actually finish his work. And then he talks about the fact that the harvest is ripe around us. What was the consequence? They stayed extra time. She became an evangelist to her village and they stayed a couple of extra days and many who were there believed in him. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him and became followers of Jesus. But my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. God gave people very difficult assignments, some of them. Uh, Moses leading the people out of Egypt, a 40-year assignment. wasn't intended to be that way, but it went on a long time. And he had to remain consistent and faithful to God's process. Noah, for me, is mind-blowing. 120 years to build something he'd never seen before. You know, it's not like he'd seen container ships or sailboats or other things. He was following God's instruction to build this massive vessel over a period in excess of a century, 120 years. I know that when I'm building something in the garden, I know that within a certain number of years, uh, the piece that I've just built is going to be rotted already. How many times did he have to go back and replace sections and do things over again? And did he not wonder, was this worthwhile? Did God really say, what's an ark? And but he kept at it again and again. If he'd half built the ark, he would have had a problem. And God's plans would have been scuttled. God would have had to make another plan. When we half do our work, God doesn't receive glory. He doesn't receive honor through what we do. I want to encourage you as you seek to work like God to look at the things that you already have on your plate and ask yourself, can I finish off what I have rather than just start something completely new? Some years ago, 
I was contemplating a particular problem that there is when people are teaching, speaking, uh, communicating concepts and truth that people in the audience actually grasp a small percentage of what they're talking about. And so an idea came to me for a product which I wrote up and I put in a slide deck. A couple of years later, as I was thinking about doing some training, I said to God, I need a new product idea to make this thing work better, stick better. And his reply was, I already gave you an idea. And it's one thing to get the idea. It's another thing to move it through to implementation. So when we're working with God, we need to finish the work, not just start the work and declare a victory. I remember back in 2005, I went to Indonesia for the first time. There was a conference on uh, transforming the nation. It was the beginning of a new movement and they had workshops and then they had held a gathering in a big stadium and they proclaimed that Indonesia was transformed. And it really troubled me because you don't get transformation by proclamation. It takes years, decades, sometimes centuries to transform cities and nations. And for us, in our lives, we are in fact part of a relay team. We're running a lap or two around and then we hand the baton on to others who carry the torch for another generation. And so there is a sense in which our work will never be 100% done until Christ returns and after that we'll still have work to do. But on the other hand, there are practical things that we can do today to actually finish something that's in our hand. And often the inspiration has dried up and it's perspiration and grit and determination that gets us across the finish line. So work like God, work completely, work to complete that which is currently in your hands. I'll see you tomorrow for the last session.